Hello friends, Patrick here. Today we are reviewing this, the Ultimate Ears Blast. Uh, this is one of the, well, kind of latest ones out of their lineup. There is obviously all sorts of, uh, basically Bluetooth speakers coming out of Ultimate Ears. Uh, this one is the one with built-in Alexa. And if you want to see the unboxing of this pretty cool box, on the inside, then check the video out below, but let's get straight into it. First of all, what you can see here is a comparison of the EU Boom 2 and this one right here, the Blast. Now they are roughly the same size. This one here is particularly a lot heavier. There's obviously a lot more electronics. There's a microphone for Alexa. And the only comparison I could really find is this UE Boom I have here that I've had for quite a while actually. It's a uh, really cool design, a special design by an artist from Sydney. As you can see, the box hmm, is also I'm quite unique. Sure. As you can see, the box is also quite unique, as is the Blast one, and I suppose UE Boom in general was probably my favorite, comparably to the small one that I had before. Um, and this one here has actually also become my favorite, but I want to talk about the little differences here, but mainly I'm going to review this. So, first of all, this one here has been through the ringer, so if this is the same build quality as this, that will survive very well. So uh, apart from the size difference and basically that it's white, and I really don't recommend buying a white one, guys. White gets dirty very easily. It doesn't look as nice and it really just, I don't know, it just gets dirty very quickly. And especially the way that I advertise this, it's advertised for the person that goes outdoors and wants to listen to music. So guys, don't get the white one. That's my recommendation. On the other hand, the blue one is actually a perfect color. It's a little bit dark. It has that 360 sound, as you can see, and it's got nice rubber corners. Now, the rubber corners, if you drop, will kind of scratch, but it is solid rubber, so you kind of hope it doesn't break, and I don't think it will. Now, however, I have to mention one thing I found about this is that I have a little screw missing. Not sure what it is, not sure why it's happening, but your mileage may vary. I don't think everybody has a little screw in there, but my one's just jingling around. So what does it sound like? First of all, comparably to the EU Boom, it sounds very, very similar. This one does have a much stronger uh, peak on voices. I have found that voice sounds a lot better on this. So if I'm playing some music with very much low bass and uh, mostly vocals, it sounds really, really good, which probably is on purpose because it's tuned to have a-E-L-E-X-A, -E -E because if I say her name, she'll pop up and start chatting about things again. Uh, she is very nosy. I'll get to that in a second. So a couple of things, let's do a sound test. So first of all, I have always found it hard to connect to the actual uh, device. So even via Bluetooth, it is a bit of a mess. So let's say I'm going to go into my Bluetooth settings and I'm going to choose uh, what I've called the device. I tap into it, it's going to connect and hopefully play some music. So I've just restarted the whole thing because I couldn't get it to play any music. Now I've downloaded some uh, music from Ben Sound. Go check it out. It's royalty free music, but you can also buy it. Uh, so let's have a listen to one of these tracks. And hopefully it will work. Let's put it up to maximum. Let's try the next one. So let's continue on the hardware. This one here actually came with a wireless charger pad. Now obviously this is very important because if you're gonna be using the assistant here, the home assistant, you're gonna to wanna to put it somewhere where you don't have a charging cable coming out of the bottom and just sitting upside down and not really looking like a nice centerpiece in your home. So this charging pad is a must if you plan on using it as a home assistant. And of course, it's nice and solid with a rubber base and the charging pad bit is pretty darn cool. It's this bit right here that screws on the bottom uh, and has some copper joints in there that allows you to be charged and you don't have to use the cable. Personally, I think that should be, uh, basically any new one should have this. I'm not sure if it does. Uh, I'm not sure if it's just the Alexa version. I particularly like the fact that you can charge it on a little stand and it sits pretty nicely. The white will match whatever you have. 
usually it shouldn't be a problem but um, you know obviously these come in all sorts of colors um, and that's up to you if you want some sort of centerpiece now in s the thing is obviously I'm comparing this to the Google Home Assistant and I have used that one for a long time now and I really really like it. in fact I've got two in the house one the small one the mini in a bedroom and the big one in the lounge room so this this I kind of already knew what to expect and I wanted to use it the same way I'd be using the Google Assistant so I did that before I get into it we've got water resistance again uh, which is really good half an hour and 1.5 meters of water again if you drop this you'd probably want to get it out of the water as quickly as possible it doesn't matter how long an electric piece of hardware stays in water it needs to get out immediately as much as the IP rating could give you some headroom on saving this piece of technology the app is much better for the blast it does have a few little bits and pieces however the reason I say it's better it's because it's less complicated there's less things to click on there's less options and it just makes it a very clean and easy to use app when you want to set it up initially with a l e x a blah 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 blah, blah and when you set up some custom sound profiles so what does it sound like well first of all I actually found the sound coming from my phone when I have Bluetooth towards this sounds a lot better than the Wi-Fi counterpart when you have your subscription on the Amazon. So when I asked this to play music, the music didn't sound as good as it sounded through my Bluetooth. That could really be the streaming quality and I couldn't quite figure out what it was. I found the same songs to be just a lot deeper through the Bluetooth connection and it might have something to do with the streaming quality uh, like I said I couldn't quite figure it out but again for those just having it in a room you probably won't notice unless you do both uh, either side by side now side by side these two sound very similar uh, on the Bluetooth side of things and obviously this connects to Wi-Fi so you don't always need your phone in saying that, the, when I was setting up the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth, first of all, you first Bluetooth to it to set up everything else, then set up Wi-Fi, I really found it a pain because I had to remove the whole device from my Bluetooth settings in my phone to actually make it work with the Wi-Fi. So it was a bit of a pain. Now actually setting up a Alexa was an absolute pain in the butt. First of all, because Amazon feels extremely clunky comparably to Google. Now Google has definitely taken Google Home to a, I mean, a level above most home assistants. Now, in America, Alexa is very, very popular because Amazon is connected straight to it and it also speaks to all your shopping and all that. And over there, uh, Amazon is a lot cheaper. Amazon actually works really well and the stuff off there can actually be bought so I can buy my toothpaste, I can buy my groceries from, from there and actually have it come to my house delivered and X the that assistant to help do that. But here in Australia, Amazon is, is not priced very well, so that, that's my first problem. The second one is the music selection. Yeah, it's okay. It's not as good in the department of asking for a specific playlist or a specific genre or even a specific mood that you might be in. I do find the Google Assistant to really pick what I say and I actually like what it plays. This one was a bit of a mixed bag. The songs just weren't quite right. And it could be because Google is completely spying on us and really knows exactly what I like, but it just, the music choices, somehow it got me. I felt understood. I wasn't the emo teenager that I once was. My assistant could understand me. This one on the other hand had a hard time and I found the music to be lacking uh, in that department. However, if you pick the right song, you pick the right band, of course it will play it and it will be very enjoyable. I do think that the con inclusion of Alexa, not now, I do think the inclusion of the assistant into a product such as an in-home Bluetooth device that may be taken onto the road is seems like a very obvious move. It seems like, why not? It should definitely have the smarts. But I feel like Alexa itself isn't quite ready for the Australian market. And maybe obviously pushing out devices like this will move that side assistant. I would think the Google Assistant would be a better one because it's matured in Australia, but maybe it's only because there's not enough of the Amazon Assistant around in Australia to make it useful. Now, if you've ever watched TV and you've maybe watched The Block on TV, they tout 
L-E-X-A a lot. Um, they really, really drill into the integrations that it has into your home. So I want to talk about that. First of all, there is none. There is nothing right now that's out of the box. You have to go out and buy maybe an Adreno little PC or something that connects to the TV if you want to turn the TV on or if you want to connect to your lights. It's it's all a little bit misleading. You have to buy specific gear that works with, with the Amazon Assistant. However, Google has already had things in the market before the Google Assistant came out. It had things prepared like the Google Chromecast, the music cast that it has, and it has all sorts of other little bits and pieces that connect automatically to their ecosystem. For some reason, the Australian version of it just works a lot better, and Amazon is playing a little bit of a catch up. Obviously, they're entering the market. In my mind, they're still entering the market. Correct me if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments what you guys think, but personally, I don't feel Alexa is ready yet. So apart from a subscription for Netflix, or maybe Stan, or maybe Spotify, or maybe Google Music, there's gonna be another one if you have this, which is obviously Amazon Music, or Amazon Prime, or Amazon, TV show one, which is which is Amazon Prime Video On Demand. So if you're already in the ecosystem, which I highly doubt if you're in Australia, um, it's probably very minimal amount of people, then, well, you just got this for your current ecosystem. I think if you get the Echo Dot, you'll probably be better off. Um, it probably has better connectivity uh, to other devices, but from this one here, I just can't tell that Alexa is very useful. So on summary, guys, this is an amazing Bluetooth speaker that's water resistant. It sounds really, really good. It's very solid and it will survive drops. It has a nice little charging pad that you might even use without using an assistant, but Alexa is probably not the best uh, assistant to use right now. Maybe sooner or later when things get better, this assistant will be the place to go. But I think Amazon needs to release a lot more things for the Australian market that's easy and plug and play instead of what I found is just this weird marketplace with commands. So you download commands to the Alexa that's made by other people, so other developers, and I feel that's still so clunky, so disjointed. Now you've got this assistant in multiple hardwares. It just feels so disjointed. So. Ultimate Ears made an absolutely amazing device with this charging pad. I really, really love it. I really like the sound of it when it's playing through my phone, but the Assistant seems like a bit of a gimmick at this stage. So if you've been using Google Assistant, this is not gonna be better. Google Assistant still answers better, and I found the answers a bit lacking. Couldn't turn my TV on, which is the main thing I use it on now because I can't find the remote all the time. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for Ultimate Ears to sending this to me for review. Highly appreciate it. Post a link below to check out more details about this. Like I said, this is an amazing Bluetooth speaker, but if you're getting this for uh, the Assistant Alexa, it's probably not, well, you know what? Just get this, why not? Because you'll get it, you'll get to check it out, but you'll still have an amazing Bluetooth speaker. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Like, subscribe, let me know what you think. And if you're in Australia, or actually, if you're an American, if you're an American in America, and you use Amazon and you use Alexa, let me know if you guys have found it better than Google Assistant, or is Google Assistant better? Because in Australia, it seems to me that Google Assistant just had a sad start. They've released all their devices now with their little screen. Anyway, another conversation for another time. Guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in another video.